Hello, Giants fans. Welcome to Giants Baseball 101. I'm Gabe Vaughn, your host. Right now, we're just at a very interesting point. And I, I mentioned yesterday just where the Giants are in this whole Otani pursuit and that, honestly, we really can't know what's going on behind the scenes and we can't know just how aggressive they're choosing to be and, and what their pursuit of Otani is actually like. Even, I, I think, what exactly they're offering him, I, I don't think that's public right now. So much right now is just behind the curtain. But, I, I mean, just, just this, this whole picture of sitting in suspense and waiting for an ultimate decision to be made, I think, honestly, that is characteristic of just the entirety of the, of the pool of teams that are interested in signing Otani, and that absolutely includes the Angels with their their own pursuit of re-signing him, which, honestly, I, I have to say, I, I don't think that he's going to land back with the Angels. Maybe, but, but honestly, I, I think that that is one of the least likely outcomes. I mean, they, they had him for a long time, and did not make the playoffs and it, it just would not surprise me at all if he does want to go elsewhere unless he becomes so convinced that it's that fan base that that really needs him and, and that's where he belongs which is a possibility but still I, I think the angels would just be hard pressed to be able to resign Otani but if everybody's just it, it's it's really a situation I think that's going to make history when everybody just sad and breathtaking suspense over o over what what Otani was going to do where where he was going to end up this is not something that is going to be forgotten in a hurry it's 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 going to be in the books honestly for years to come that's where we're at and that's the thing that the Giants are in the middle of and it is absolutely an opportunity for Farhan Zaidi to prove that he actually has something in the tank he has been such a disappointment Ever since he came on in 2019 as the Giants general manager over these five years, he's, he's just been a disappointment. But now he really has the opportunity to prove what he has in the tank. And the reason he's extended through 2026, I mentioned it yesterday, the reason is Bob Melvin. It, it was Melvin coming on to the Giants that, that paved the way. That, that is why Zaidi has been extended because ownership evidently felt that they needed to to keep a stable environment, and with with the manager and coaching staff and the front office, that that was really important to keep a stable environment. But it's because of just the high profile figure that Melvin is, and the the history of success that he has, and good decision making, and the ability to run a team really well. And I, I can't say whether he'll be a Hall of Fame manager. I mean, that that's a possibility, but he's he's just just seen as, I, I mean, the the overwhelming reaction was was very positive. And, and there were other candidates that were in the running for the Giants manager position, but none of them I don't think would have resulted in an extension for Farhan Zaidi. Various candidates on the the coaching staff were interviewed for the position, but I don't think any of them had, had any of these candidates, Mark Hallberg, Alyssa Nacken, Kai Correa, or Ron Wotus. Yeah, e even Wotus, who's, who's had a long career with the Giants. Had any of them been hired as manager? I just, I don't think that I'm almost certain that this extension for Zaidi would not have panned out the way it did. There's just something about Melvin that it just, it's, it's, it's just no one else would have had the same immediate impact. So it's, I mean, it, it should be pretty easy to see where I'm going with all this. I, I'm excited about having Melvin and I'm I'm hopeful that he can replicate some of his success with the Giants and, and really 
just just be a good a good leader on the field for them and a, a good guy with with strategy and I'm hoping too that he'll steer the team back toward a more traditional approach where you you try to squeeze performance out of good players and instead of having to manipulate everything and just overuse platoons when they they don't even really bring in anything i'm I'm hoping melvin can kind of steer the team back from kind of a, a specialized reinvention of the game to the traditional game and yet remember the point melvin's the reason for zaidi's extension if zaidi cannot put a good team on the field in 2024 it's the point i made yesterday it's pretty easy to see how Bob Melvin, his hiring as manager, that could actually turn out to be a bad thing for the Giants. And it's not because of anything in itself. It, it'd just be because of ownership, and they, they just couldn't foresee. They needed to at least give an offseason to see how things would play out. But all of that said, that there's, there's always the possibility that Zaidi is going to be able to turn things around this time, and he's, he's going to put a good team on the field. And there's there's also this new update. I checked the Giants website for for updates, and this this new piece of information about just more consideration of Jung Hu Lee. Not that I think they're going to sign him anytime soon, but I'm I mean, it's it's a good thing that, or it could be a good thing that they are looking elsewhere besides Otani, in that they're thinking of signing him and another player. Now, it's a very bad thing if it in any way is weakening their pursuit of Otani. But I don't know that there is any reason to think that there is. There, I, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't automatically assume that this is some kind of a Trey Turner, Aaron Judge thing. There's, there's probably no reason to think it's necessarily weakening their pursuit of Otani and that they're... I, I mean, if, if, if at the end of the day what they're thinking is that they can... Sign Otani and another player are, are probably expressed better that they're willing to to put in the money to do it. Then that is great. That that obviously is the right way of thinking. And and they're going to need at least two superstars this off season. I I think that much. It it should speak for itself. And and now I did want to just talk about the the Dodgers meeting with Otani and and anybody who's heard that I'm sure it is not making you feel good for clearly obvious reasons. And and I mean that that was on the Dodgers official website where that information came from, and it it maybe it wasn't supposed to leak out because manager Dave Roberts mentioned it, but. Then general manager Brandon Gomes, he he started talking about it and, and he sounded like he did not want this to leak out. And I probably wouldn't take that to mean there's there's some big mysterious thing going on here. I, I, I mean, I think it's practically I think it's very normal for teams sometimes during negotiations to not want everything to leak out, like what they do at the winter meetings and such. So I, I wouldn't make too much, honestly, of the circumstances surrounding it, but just the fact that the Dodgers met with Otani and it should just be very clear that they are they, they are pursuing him like like just about anything. And I, I mean, I hate to say it, but they're they're going to be willing to put in a ton of money on him. I, I, I just I just think that the sky is going to be just about the limit. So I'm I'm saying this just to make the point that that the Giants have to just be ready to make a big budget offer in order to beat that. It it, it might sound like a ton, but in baseball, you know, at least in free agency, okay, may, maybe not arbitration and stuff, but in free agency, it's it's just at the end of the day, what decides fair pay for a player? It's it's the highest bidder. Like, I mean, there there are obviously competitive balance taxes and stuff, but 
aside from from all of that, it's it's just there 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 is no such thing as as fair pay. That, that that's what the highest bidder thinks it should be. It's it's I mean that that is the rule there. And it it's it's just how it goes, honestly. And I I mean if if the Giants cannot make the mistake they made last year, then we would have no we should have no reason to be crippled by this news. Cause last year it, it was and I don't I don't know the all of the details and I, I don't think they ever fully came out, but they were offering essentially the same deal as the Yankees to Aaron Judge, which was about nine years and three hundred and sixty million dollars. But I I mean the Giants just they they wouldn't top that. They they let Judge go for that amount, even after Trey Turner just fell off the market. So they they can't make that same mistake this year. The Dodgers are serious about it. They they're very serious about about getting Otani, and and the Giants. I think. I think they should try to meet with him. And I understand it's possible that they have done so already and it just hasn't been mentioned. But what what they need to do is is they're going to have to to try to meet with him to get serious about, honestly, what he's looking for so that they don't just get kicked out of this opportunity again. So that that's all we have for today and I, I understand that this was kind of a a limited episode and not a whole ton was talked about but i i just at, at such a at such a critical time i just wanted to come on again and, and try to give the most updated comments so thank you for watching this has been giants baseball 101 please subscribe if you haven't also, please leave your questions and comments. You know where to do it. I'll see you next time on Giants Baseball 101.